Hello Internet, welcome back for part two of the Final Cut 7 to Final Cut X Red Workflow video series. Uh, in part one we went through Final Cut 7 to 7 to X to resolve and now in part two we're going to handle what happens when your project comes into Final Cut Pro 10. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go find the XML that we just made in part one in resolve. We're going to import that into Final Cut 10. So click import and let Final Cut 10 do its thing. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a new project with your sequence from Resolve and it's going to make a new event that's going to contain all of the media that came in with it. Both the project and the event are going to have the same name and both will have parentheses around it with Resolve in the title. Now one thing you should be aware of is that the name that Resolve uh, sends out when you make the XML is going to be the name that Final Cut 7 gave it. So you're going to want to rename if you want to both your project and the event so that they both have the name that you originally assigned to them when you exported the XML from Resolve. Anyway, as we scroll through our timeline, you'll see that what we had in Resolve is what came into Final Cut 10. The only difference being that in our Final Cut 7 timeline we were working with Transcoded ProRes and now as I'm going to show you in the inspector if you go into the info tab of it you'll see a few new options you'll see that you can modify the red raw settings and you'll see that the original name is now a .r3d and when you click those modify red raw settings you can go in and actually now affect the raw in Final Cut 10, do not do what I'm doing to that clip there, as that looks terrible. Anyway, we'll cancel out of there and go back to the original. And now a few notes on what kind of red playback you should expect. As you can see, I'm getting real-time playback with my R3D footage in Final Cut 10. I do not have really powerful RAID drives here. I have a little G-RAID hooked up with an eSATA cable and I'm able to get real-time R3D playback on my Retina MacBook Pro. And I'll get even more streams when I move this media over to my Thunderbolt drive later. This is awesome. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is finally go and get that 7 to X XML that we made way, way back in the beginning part of Lesson 1 and then forgot all about. So let's go into 7 to X and it's going to ask you where that XML lives and all you need to do is open it and that dialog box will open. And ours was under the Final Cut 7 XML folder and we're going to import that. And when you click import you will notice that nothing happens. Uh, stuff is happening, just give it a minute and let it do its thing. And what's going to happen is very similar to Resolve. It's going to make a new event for you. And it's also going to make a new compound clip with your Final Cut 7 sequence or if you made a project with your sequences. And also it's going to import your footage based on your import settings, very similar to what happened when we did it with Resolve. So as you can see, it's still working. Give it a minute. It's much more thorough in its transfer process than Resolve is, and that's why it's taking some extra time. All right, so that's all done. Now, as you can see, 7 to X made a new event um, with all of the footage that we had, much similar to the way Resolve did, uh, except this one includes our audio as well as our video and some of the titles, and, and it also included our speed and our position changes that Resolve did not include in its translation. And the way it does all this is that it makes a compound clip instead of a project and it puts all of Final Cut 7's data that's transferred between the two applications into that compound clip as opposed to a project and puts it all in one place. As you can see, I'm scrubbing through this compound clip here and it's the full finished Final Cut 7 sequence. Now let's go ahead and lay that into a project and see how we can see all of this data. I've made a new project and placed this compound clip into it. Um, and I've renamed that Bedsty 7 to x Now let's select this compound clip. And let's go up into the clip menu and scroll down to break apart clip items. I've mapped it to F2 on my keyboard. Anyway. We are now breaking apart, and let's give Final Cut 10 a second to do this. And 
you will see your entire Final Cut 7 sequence contained in this compound clip. And you're probably asking yourself right about now, why on earth did I bother doing any of this? Well, the reason is that you now have access to all of your transform and speed adjusted clips and anything that you want to reference in your resolve sequence can be referenced from here and applied to it using the, the new copy and paste attributes command. So let me show you how this process works. And we're back in our resolve sequence. Let's go and make a new keyword collection and we're gonna call it reference and place it in our resolve event. And what we're gonna do now is bring in that reference movie we exported from Final Cut 7 and we're gonna lay it in on top of our current edit. So go down into your timeline, make sure you are home and then append edit your reference movie and it's going to appear above your sequence and now go in and set the opacity for your reference movie to 50 percent and what this is going to allow you to do is cross check your resolve sequence against your other things and you'll notice here that some of the stuff doesn't look right and that's because the position and transform settings are not correct we're going to address that in a minute but what we're really interested in right now is finding out whether all of the clips from our edit came in correctly and nope that's the correct clip however I think coming up one is going to be off and we will know it when we see it let's give it a second and there it is that is the wrong clip resolve sent us the wrong clip so what do we do about this well the first thing that we're gonna do is enable and disable uh, the reference movie to see which clip is wrong so as you can see the clip that's incorrect is the guy on the stairs so the next thing we'll do is if you look at the time code it says 24406 so we need to go jump over to our X to 7 sequence um, using the step back in timeline command and we are going to go to 244.06 in our sequence and as soon as I get there oh, looks like I overshot it let's zoom in and 244.06 that is the clip that we need to get over so as you know this these are ProRes clips that are in this sequence and what we need to do is get the time code from here and find out what clip it is and if you see at the top that's the name of the original clip let's see if it's already in our resolve bin and it does not look like it is so what we're gonna need to do is go into our finder and go find the original so it's in the bed drive under day one because it's a roll one clip and we'll jump in there and let's grab the correct clip and now we're going to drag that clip into our resolve event and that's going to bring in the original red media into Final Cut X so let's grab that clip now what's gonna be the quickest way to get to the correct in frame I mean obviously we don't want to have to sit around and go matching this stuff up frame to frame all the time so we're gonna go instead back into our X to 7 sequence and we're gonna look and we're gonna look at this column at the media start column and we're gonna take that time code and what we're gonna do is now go back into our clip and push control Y to enable the time code above it and we're gonna go to that portion of the clip and to the exact same number and that's going to be our endpoint and we're going to push I to set an endpoint and then we're going to go a few frames and set an out point or if you want to drop the clip in it doesn't matter but what we're going to do now is append that portion of the clip into the timeline of our X to 7 timeline and get our out point correct and double check that it matches and you can also push V to enable and disable the clip if you want to see whether it's for sure in the timeline and that you got the right timing. But in this case, I know it's correct, so I'm going to 
cut and then I'm going to jump back to my resolve sequence and we're going to paste that in. Okay, so we are back, we are still at our in frame and now we're going to paste the clip into our timeline. As you can see, it pastes above it and that's because it was already a connected clip to begin with. And now we're going to enable and disable our reference QuickTime and as you can see, there's no difference. So that means we've done this correctly and we have fixed any problems. Now hopefully you won't have too many of these coming in from Resolve, but in case you have a few clips that are off, that's the quickest way that I've found to address the problem. Um, if you guys have anything smarter, please let me know because um, this can get tedious if there are a lot of mistakes. But the best thing you can do is prep your Final Cut 7 sequence as well as possible so that this happens as frequently as possible when you come in and out of Resolve. Anyway, let's start figuring out some of these transform issues in our sequence. And um, this first clip is technically not correct, but we're not going to start there. I want to give you something that's a little more egregious when it comes to fixing a transform issue. And um, so let's start scrolling through and that one's not bad. Uh, let's start on this one. So push C to select the clip or just select the clip. And now we're going to jump back into our X to 7 timeline. So step forward in the timeline and we're going to jump back to the beginning of our sequence and let's find the clip. Theoretically you would grab the time code and possibly do it but where I know where it is so I'm just going to go and find the clip manually. And what I'm going to do here is select the clip and copy so command C and now we're going to step back to our resolve timeline and we're going to push shift command V or paste attributes and you're going to select the transform checkbox and click paste and look at that our clip now matches up and that's how you're going to fix any transform issues that you find in your project this can also be tedious uh, hopefully the editor who prepped it or cut this was easy on your life and if not this is an opportunity to bill your clients next up we're going to take a look at how to get your speed changes back. Uh, now this will only work if you did constant speed changes, but go into your Final Cut 7 to X sequence and go under the Retime menu and select Show Retime Editor. And you're gonna see that the extra tab pops up and this is going to um, let you know if you have speed changes on any of your clips. So we're gonna zoom in. I happen to know where a couple of them are, but you know, you would theoretically scroll through your timeline until you found um, some of the headings that were not green. And there's one there. So what we're going to do, it's going to be the exact same process as the transform tool, except that we already know where our speed changes are in the resolve sequence because we put them on the upper tracks in Final Cut 7. So there's our first one there. And let's select the clip and we're going to do paste attributes, retiming. And your speed change will now be identical to what it was in Final Cut 7. And you will take that same process and apply it to the rest of your speed adjusted clips. So finally, let's talk about audio. What I tend to do here is just detach audio from the reference movie as I'm usually just finishing my film. And you'll see that your audio will match up identically and you will know that everything's been synced and then when you get the final mix back from the sound designer you'll just drop that in underneath however if you want to go back to your original audio files just jump back in your 7 to X sequence copy them all jump back into your resolve sequence and you're just gonna paste them in at the first frame of video now, one thing to be careful about is make sure that the, your audio starts with the first frame of video and so that you don't paste everything back in out of sync. However, it should all match up and you will have your finished movie as it was in Final Cut 7 um, to work with. So anyway, um, I'm going to leave the reference audio in for my purposes. But I hope you guys found this helpful and with everything being so new, I am positive that stuff will get easier and better as uh, especially third-party developers 
find and adapt their tools. Uh, Phil Hodgetts of Intelligence Assistance, if you're listening, I would love it if 7 to X gave you the option to relink to your red media uh, so we didn't have to do that extra resolve step. But anyway, um, I'm convinced that this is only going to get better and you should be really excited about the possibilities that you can now have with your movies in Final Cut 10. Uh, it's a great finishing tool at this point. And I think it's really going to change the way that people make and especially finish their movies and especially when it comes to Red Workflow. Anyway, that'll do it for um, the Final Cut 7 to Final Cut 10 Red Workflow tutorial series. Um, if you're more interested in seeing how Final Cut 10 actually works with Red Media and how to start, build, and finish a project within Final Cut 10, check out my other Red Workflow tutorials. They are in the description below. Um, there's some awesome stuff in this new release, guys. And also, um, all the steps from this tutorial have been posted in the description below. And if you have any questions or things you notice that you want to add to this workflow, post them in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you. At the end of the day, the goal here is to make all of this stuff as seamless and easy as possible. And I'd love your feedback on how to make it all better. And if you watch this and it all went totally over your head or you just don't feel like doing it, well, this is what I do for a living. So feel free to hire me either to consult on your movie or to finish your film for you if that's what you need. So if you want to get in touch, just drop me an email over at sam at wemakemovies.org. And lastly, if you're wondering what this whole We Make Movies thing is, check us out over at wemakemovies.org. Or if you live in L.A. or Toronto, sign up for our newsletter and then come to one of our events. I'll see you guys next time. And cut!